We finally have an illustration system at ConvertKit. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how we went from this messy mood board through a ton of exploration to end up with these components in Figma, as well as a set of style guidelines that are gonna help us add to the system throughout the rest of the year. Okay, so our illustration styles were kind of all over the place, I'm gonna be honest. We'd never officially defined what our illustration style was. And so that meant that each person who worked on an illustration project was free to like make their best interpretation of what illustration would best suit our brand. And yeah, of course that led us to end up with a bunch of different styles in use. Obviously as creative director, I knew that it was my job to start getting consistency here. And this was a thing that I wanted to tackle. I started by taking a look at all of the things that we were making and arranging them based on the things that I felt were working or close to it and the things that weren't, but more importantly, why? Like why was something not working? What do we want to change about it? Why do we want to keep some elements of what we were doing previously? I was making these judgments based on our brand personality and what I know we want to like portray with our brand, what we want to express. But there was definitely a lot of gut feeling involved too, as well as my vision for what the future of illustration at ConvertKit should look like. And it's kind of fun to get to make those decisions as creative director. I also put together this mood board that summed up the style I want to go for, kind of like a sketchy hand-drawn style and I also noted the things that I knew we wanted to avoid too, because I know that when I say sketchy hand-drawn, it could easily stray into these areas of being too cute, too textured, or too detailed. And so I wanted to make that clear. I got feedback from all the other designers on the team on this mood board, as well as from our CEO. And then when we were aligned on this being the direction that we wanted to go for, I started working with Holly Arnett, who is a graphic design contractor that we've been working with at ConvertKit for a long time. Holly is a brand strategist and coach with her own business called Maker and Moxie, but she She's also a very talented illustrator and I knew that the best role that I could play in this project was actually one of art direction and have someone who is much more talented at the actual drawing side to be creating the illustrations themselves. Holly started out by making like some slight tweaks to what we were currently doing to see if we could get it to align with this new direction without a huge change. But it became clear that we really did need to like start fresh with this, start from the ground up and think about what this should be, like letting go of what existed in the past. So we started pretty narrow and then went out really wide, tried a bunch of different things, like a lot of different pen styles, uh, ways of drawing, thicknesses. We discussed these in many design team meetings. It was really fun to like get nerdy and get into this level of detail with things. And although I'm primarily responsible for this project, it was also really fun to have the wider design team involved so that it wasn't just brand design who was making decisions about this, but that the product design team was involved too. So this phase of the project basically looked like Holly trying a bunch of things, me leaving her a bunch of feedback, um, both from myself and from the other designers, and then her going away, trying more stuff and repeat and repeat and repeat until we felt like we were getting close to something that was gonna work for us. It was during this exploration phase that I realized from looking at all of the illustrations we had existing in our app and in our marketing stuff right now that we needed more than one type of illustration. So we're just like making things a little bit more complex. <laughs> Sometimes an illustration is gonna be the main visual element on a page. And so it needs to like have a bit more detail and take up a bit more space. Other times it needs to be smaller because it's kind of on like equal footing with some text, some content. And other times it needs to be like barely bigger than an icon. And we knew that just designing one illustration and like shrinking or enlarging it depending on its use case wasn't gonna be the best thing for getting consistency. If you do something really detailed, it's gonna lose all that when it gets smaller. And if you do something not detailed enough, it's gonna kind of look like too heavy handed when you blow it up. So we settled on this idea of creating three levels of illustration. Level one would be that just a bit bigger than an icon type of visual, usually to anchor some text. Level two would be larger and have a bit more detail and level three would be larger and even more detailed. And this is the one that's designed to be like the main visual element on a page. We went back and forth for lots of options for all of these levels of illustration, but this is what we settled on. So our level three illustrations use a textured navy pen. So we get some nice like variation in the line weight, but it kind of feels like it was drawn with a marker. They have some pieces filled in using our 500 and 300 level colors with little accent pieces in those colors as well. 
some nice detail. And there's a watercolor like squiggle in the background that the illustration sits on to hold the space. Level two illustrations don't have the filled in bits, but they're still drawn with the like navy textured pen. And they have just one color used for accents. The watercolor here, we decided it can be a squiggle like the level three, just a bit smaller, or it could have a few pieces highlighted. We wanted to bring in a bit more variation here because a level two illustration is the one that's very likely to appear against others on the page. Then our smallest illustrations, our level ones are very simplified and they use a colored marker pen instead of the navy one. We did this because these are often used, like I said, as a visual anchor for text. And the text is always in like dark tones. And so to make the text easier to scan through on a page, we wanted to make sure that the illustration was in a different color. And that also helps us bring some more color into our pages too. It's hardly noticeable, but we think it's important that it's there. They do have some little accents in a shade darker as well. And there's also some very subtle watercolor shading too. I'm really happy with this style we've ended up with. And I asked Holly how she would describe it. I would say they're like, they feel hand drawn. Mm -hmm. To me, they evoke like creativity or like a work in progress or like this like sketchiness, but without being messy. They still feel like elevated and professional, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, a high design bar, I guess, but still feeling that kind of like hand drawn, handmade, crafted feeling. So far, touch wood, the style we've developed is working out well for us. We've applied it to 10 different illustrations so far in the system. One of the most complex parts of the style we've settled on though is keeping the handmade textured feel of the Procreate brushes when the illustrations are vectorized. And I got Holly's take on this too, to ask her how she does it. Yeah, um, I played around a lot with like the image tracing settings in Illustrator because that's how I vectorize them. I vectorize them in Illustrator, especially like the watercolor that can lose a lot if you just try mm. and like do the usual image tracing. So I actually use, I think it's called Shades of Grey or something in Illustrator and that is really good because it captures the whole swash mm. of watercolor and then I flatten that to one it comes out with like a million layers of shades of gray <laughs> um, and then I flatten that all down to one layer and then in Figma we overlay two of them with some uh, pass-through opacity so that it still has that feeling of like multiple layers of paint underneath so that's like the best tip is with the watercolor because the others they come through pretty well just with a normal image trace um like you do lose some of the texture but um at least like the kind of jaggedy outlines um and the kind of like hand-drawn feel stay but the paint watercolor paint was the hardest to figure out but that um shades of gray does a good job of making that kind of still feel painted. <laughs> now that we have these 10 finished illustrations so far, I have set them up in Figma as components in the design system that we share with the product team so that any of us can grab them at any point from the assets panel. Right now I have the different levels set up as variants in component properties. And uh, we'll see if that was the right idea when we get into actually using the system more. But for now, that's, that's how I have it. I also have a variant set up for background color. Usually on the marketing side of things, we put things on these um, light 50 level colors, but in the app, they're more often to be used on white. And we found that the watercolor looked too dark if we kept it the same on both. So yeah, for this variant here, the watercolor drops back one level. These colors that you see the illustrations in are kind of themed by our app colors. So we have like the grow things are blue, the things about connecting, sending emails are yellow, automations red, selling things, earning income green. I think though that to make this more flexible and to allow us to create the variation that we often need in marketing assets, I do need to set these up with all of the other colors available as well in an illustration. But I'll have to note somehow, like for example, in the grow your audience one, blue is its primary color that it should be used in if you have a choice. These components are set up with all of the illustrations at the same level on a frame that's the same size. So the level threes are 480 by 480, level twos 280 by 280, and level one's just 80. <laughs> that means if I just drag one in and show you, it's easier to just swap them out with another one without um, anything losing its shape or doing anything weird. <laughs> and in the component, this one down here actually is an instance of this one above. So if we needed to make a tweak to the illustration, like let's say we wanted to move this arrow over for some reason, um, it'll automatically update in that one too. So that will help us keep things consistent across all of the different color variants. 
And then I've just put an instance of each of the illustrations down here so we can see how they're looking as a set and kind of like judge them as a group. Doing this helped me spot a few things that I've made comments on down here where the watercolor doesn't feel like it's matching with the others quite right. And so we're gonna make some tweaks and it's only by like seeing them in context, comparing against others that we can realize that sort of thing. So very useful. So that's a lot about the technical side of the system, but what about how we decide what to illustrate in the first place? To start with, I knew we needed an illustration to represent each of the main features within our app and each of the main like sections of benefits that ConvertKit offers to creators. So I have this huge list here in Monday, which is the project management tool we use that we'll just like be working our way through slowly. And of course, we'll add new ones to this list when the need arises as well. Like Holly just made these about um, multi-factor authentication in our app, which look really cool. Holly will be the main one implementing this style um, for the foreseeable future. And I asked her about her process when a new illustration is requested, how does she decide exactly what to draw? I pretty much like, I think about what we already have. So I don't want to draw the same thing or draw something that's really similar to one that we already have. I want to make something kind of new or make sure there's a balance of illustrations that are quite literal or like represent a part of the product versus illustrations that are a little bit more conceptual or about like the idea or the feeling, I guess, of the topic. So I kind of have to decide do I want to be more literal with this one or more conceptual? What would fit better? I also have to think about what kind of concept would scale at each level because we have mm. three levels of illustration. So because we want to have like an illustration for each level, I can't draw something that's really complex or won't make sense at the tiniest level. I can't break it down enough to that level one. So it has to be something that's going to scale. And then um, once I've decided, then I sketch it out. So I make sure that I can do those three levels, sketch it out, yep. then I illustrate it fully with the system, with all the pens and everything, and then I vectorize it. So then it's ready to be used everywhere and can be scaled and all of that good stuff. So yeah, that's the process. Now, the tough part. How long did we spend on all of this? I just looked back in the version history of the mood board and I saw that I started it in August, 2022. As I'm recording this, it is the beginning of April, 2023. So clearly this project has been going on for a long time. I want to reassure you that we have been focused on many other things and this hasn't been like something we've been working on solidly for all of those months, but that is the reality of like a brand evolution project like this. Sometimes it just is something that you have to try and squeeze in amongst other things and make like progress bit by bit where you can to get to a point that you're happy with it. I will say that what has helped us speed things up in the past few months though has been setting goals or like a milestone for where we want to get to in a certain time frame. Like this month for example I said we needed to get nine illustrations completed and in the system and we did. <laughs> it's been a really fun project to work on and my first like big long-term art direction kind of project too. And I asked Holly what it's been like from her perspective to work on this as a contractor with a very opinionated in-house team. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been like really fun. I'm having a great time. I obviously, like you said, I've been working with ConvertKit for a long time now. So that's really useful in that like, and I've done most, if not all of the illustration for ConvertKit up until this point, I think. <laughs> um, so like, I know what came before. I know what worked, what didn't work. Like obviously with feedback from you and everybody else, but I have a pretty good understanding of what has been done and um, where it kind of needed to go. So that was great that I had that experience. There's obviously like probably the most challenging thing that I've found throughout the process was just balancing like a big long-term project that doesn't maybe necessarily have like as intense of a deadline as like mm. the things that come up quickly or that have immediate needs. So like balancing those immediate needs with like the long-term projects was probably the hardest thing. And then obviously we're in completely different time zones. So I'm in New Zealand, you're in Spain, there's people everywhere else. So that sometimes the feedback isn't as quick as it could be but that also is kind of a nice thing sometimes too that I can like do the work leave it and then the next day I come back and there's like all this feedback that happened overnight <laughs> um, right. as if by magic <laughs> yeah like I I don't know it's been great otherwise I think we had a good system with like me just going away working on a bunch of stuff sending it to you and then getting the feedback back from everybody yeah I don't know what about you what did you think of the process oh I like it throwing it back on me <laughs> yeah I I think same challenges as you in the like making the time for it when we have other like deadline specific projects and this is something 
something that like, yeah, we'll start getting the benefits from it as soon as it's done, but it's really hard to prioritize when you've got like, you know, more urgent um, things in, in the pipeline. Um, and yeah, time zones as well. I feel like sometimes I'm like, oh, I just want to see Holly try this and now I've got to wait a whole 24 hours yeah. <laughs> so I can see the, like, see yeah. her try it. Um, mostly just because I was excited, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think you're right about the context that you have from having worked with ConvertKit for so long and also like using the app yourself, right? Yeah. We can say, Holly, we need an illustration about email templates. And that's literally all we say. And you know how ConvertKit email templates work and like which pieces of the app UI should be pulled out in that illustration. So that is, I think, being really vital as well. I don't think we'd be as far along in the process if you didn't have that context. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that, but it is super handy because yeah, I use ConvertKit all the time as myself as a creator. And so, yeah. And obviously I get to see the behind the scenes when things are being worked on and like the email mm. template like the email designer I helped make some templates and like yeah. some landing page templates and stuff so like I know yeah how it works on the back end but then also as a creator so I get like the concepts as a creator I know what that feels like or means to me but then I also know what it looks like as a product so I can illustrate that too so yeah it's definitely useful for sure well I'm looking forward to creating many more illustrations with you as we continue to build out the system um, <laughs> now that we have it all all nicely defined <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> if you want to see how we edit these illustrations into our brand guidelines, go watch this video here and subscribe so you don't miss future updates in this design system series. <laughs>